Hello, everybody. Welcome back. This is Jonathan Gardner playing Factorio. I think this is episode four. And I thought at the beginning of the episode, I might as well just respond to the comments directly. So um, I might put some written messages down there. I might do something else. Anyway, so first comment. Happy New Year, man. I've missed these vids from Evo Ovinge or Ivo. Hey, missed you guys too. Um, it was a lot of fun making these videos. Uh, life got busy, obviously. But oh, I'm back. I got a new computer. What happened was I decided to build that mega factory and I started making plans for it. And just at that point in time, uh, about June of last year, work got really busy. It just got really busy. And uh, some stuff happened. So I'm back. That's all that matters. Let's wire up some more of these guys here. Yeah. Let's put you over here. Let's put that down there. All right. All right. We'll have to figure that out later, exactly how that's going to work. I need some more um, wood to make some more power poles. Yeah, life was busy. And uh, Baggock701. Uh, if I'm mispronouncing your name, you can try to spell it out for me. Baggock701, he says, need more iron. Um yeah, probably. I, I think I will need more iron, actually, eventually. Hi, Eliana. Eliana. Yes. Cade dies. I know that. Just thought you should know. It's sad. You know who else died? Cade? Crota. Who's Crota? He dies. Does he die, too? Yeah. Why Why does he die? He's the bad guy. <laughs> oh, he's a, he's a bad guy. Bad. He's a bad guy. Flammables. Let's get that. Uh, so he says, more need more iron. Are you planning to eventually make your furnace array electric? Uh, no. I will make the steel electric only because I want to put productivity modules in there to reduce the need for iron. If I put steel in, then that, I think that reduces the need of by one lane. It's significant. Um, so I will use electric furnaces for steel, but not for iron. In fact, I'm going to put some more down here just because i can let's do it let's put two there i might uh create more iron just because i need more iron for something like probably for circuits or something like that um because i'll be building a lot of productivity modules i might decide that um i want to do that okay uh the second thought he has thought can you circuit network steel furnaces um uh, probably not directly. Like, I don't... Let's see. Can you want, line these guys up? No. You can't. You can't. You can't. Nope. You can't do the furnace... Can you do a steel furnaces? Let's go try steel furnaces. Let's see if we can wire these guys up. I don't know that you can even wire up... Like, can you... Yeah, you can wire up the, the factory, the mining drills. I don't think you can wire up the steel furnaces. Let's try it out, though. Nope, I won't let you do it. Okay, you cannot wire up the steel, the steel furnaces. Um, to reduce buffer space in the furnace array. So buffer space. So typically in factorial, buffer space is not a huge issue. There's a couple items where it is, but because you're looking at throughput and not like you're not counting what you have, you're just like counting what you can get. It's not a, it's not a, you want to, you want to get the rates right. The buffering doesn't really do anything for you, except the only time it helps is like when you have a train that shows up every minute and you want to buffer there so that you can get steady throughput from from that. So that's the only time that buffering is uh, helpful. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna grab 50 more of these. I probably will never need them. You know what? In fact, I don't. I don't. I have too many as it is. I have 50 in my belt there. My belt. Oh, no, stop. I want to take some of these. Um, I'll take 50 of these. Actually, I'll take 100. I'm gonna need like 400 or something like that, 300. I have the spreadsheet. I can bring up the spreadsheet down here and look at it uh, on my other computer. But uh, turns out the Brave that runs on my Mac OS X is different than the Brave that runs on my Windows computer. And so I can't do profiles on my Mac OS X. Automated rail trust for it. There we go. So we do have rails. Let's take a look at how we're doing here. Let's kind of bring this up actually one more. Three. There we go. And let's just make a little more space here. Um, there we go. 
and we'll just do this way. And then we'll have, I don't know what, what it's going to look like, but it'll look like something. Something, right? All right, that's probably good enough. And and we'll, we'll adjust. We will adjust as time goes on, as this iron ray gets depleted. Um, I have a feeling it'll last quite a while. There we go. That's going to wire up there. So There we go. Need some coal down there. Can't reach that far. And that should always is probably pulling disproportionately from one side or the other. I'm not too concerned about that. I think this is fine. I'll probably be mucking with this throughout the entire series. Uh, one thing I did want to do was extend the iron. So now that I know that I have basically two full belts of iron ore, I want to see if it's getting all the way to the end. And it's not. So extending the iron is kind of pointless. Okay. So we have steel coming in. I'm going to do some uh, things for steel uh, now. So that was uh, Bedcock 701. Yeah, so don't I, I don't worry about buffering except that there's different like you know um, timing, like for the how the um, the trains do do a stuff. Oh shoot, I should go up here. Stop, please. All right. Ah shoot, that's bad. That is bad. X. No, like this. Um, probably I should move it out here. I bet you because it's only like half a belt that I need that yellow belts are fine. I probably should replace all these with yellow belts. Um, in fact, I should probably make a buffer of yellow belts just because I want to tap into it. You know, it's it's kind of pointless to have red belts if you're not using red belt supplies. If if red belt is overkill, then don't use it, right? Uh, that just makes sense, right? Oh well, it's my philosophy. Don't overkill. No, that's not my philosophy. All right, I have a comment from Steve Austin. Hey, Steve Austin, happy new year to you and your family. Same to you, bud. Production line was the game you were thinking of. I don't think Factorio would lend itself to that sort of setup, though I think I could do with a more complicated setup and more resources, a use for wood, a middle ground between Bob's mods and what is now. A middle ground between Bob's mods. Ooh, that's interesting. I have some ideas. I already have some ideas on what that would look like, just, just from hearing your comment there. A middle ground for Bob's mods. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Gates. Gates are important. Uh, that sounds like very interesting. That does. Wow. Wow. See, you guys come up with amazing things. This is why I got to read the comments, man. Um, I'm going to do regular belts. I'm going to actually go get some regular belts up here. And I think I will store regular belts somehow. Like this will be surplus, but I want extras. Maybe what I'll do is this. I'll have a steel chest here. Or just keep like a hundred of these guys. Now let's keep a whole row. Yeah, just like that. And then for underground belts, we will have. Yeah, we don't want these to line up. Yeah, we don't want that many of these guys. I will do a heterogeneous setup though. I'm not everything's going to be blue belts. All right, let's go check out our gears. I think our gears could use some help. Let's go see how that would help. I think I only use the wood for power lines. That's the only use wood has. Um, there might be something else that I'm not forgetting. I think you can use it as fuel, of course, but uh, typically we only use it for power lines. And even then, I don't need that many. So for my miniature mall up there, I probably have too many. Okay. All right. 
that's a, this is looking like a really healthy factory. Let's start with the mining industry. And to get that started, we have to start building the components for the mining industry, which would be uh, pump jacks. Where are the pump jacks? Right there. Pump jacks require four ingredients, with gears being the most important. So what we'll do is we'll kind of set it up like this. So we'll have the gears come down here uh, like this. And this will be pump jacks. And then um, this will be for chemical plants. And then we need uh, these guys, which require stone brick. Ah, maybe I'll put stone brick. I think I need stone brick on the bus anyway, because we need to build electric furnaces eventually. So let's build a stone brick array. Probably have it come down here instead of the wood. So stone brick will come down here. Um, I should probably finish off the uh, this guy. A compromise between Bob's mods and oh man, I just I just can't get it out of my head. I've already thought of some recipes and. Mm. Mm. So like it starts off like regular factory and then it builds up towards Bob's mods. That sounds cool. That sounds really cool. Thank you, Steve Austin, for that comment. I'm gonna upvote that right now. Thomas Frewer says, hi there, me again. Hi, Thomas, don't panic. I love your little symbol there, I love that book. Sounds like you've got a whole game of your own planned out already. If I had any programming skills, I'd be making games and mods and all that. But what I actually do is make games and mods for tabletops instead of computers. Ooh, unfortunately you're getting another wall of text before me today. There's a lot of instructions to be said on this topic. Okay, so I'm gonna go through this a little by little. I don't know if I have any other comments. Uh, there's a couple of replies, so I, I wanna go through this list of stuff. And I don't mind long comments. Um, I will read them usually, um, unless they're too long and I'm bored or something like that. But I will read them eventually. Let's just get this wired up for now while, I, while I'm thinking. I want the electric power poles. Yeah, like that, okay. So he needs uh, circuits, steel, and pipes. So let's get the circuits here. Uh huh. And then the steel, we're gonna bring down this way. We already have pipes and steel. And the name of the game here is not, um, I will upgrade to red belts if I need it, but I'm gonna try not to. There we go. We'll do that for the, there we go. All right, I think this is steel. I hope this is steel. I'm wishing this is steel. That is steel. Okay, excellent. And so we'll be making pump jacks, not a few, 50 of them in fact. Let's wire up the gears actually, let's get them coming. Okay. And then we're going to be putting this into a box. And I can actually limit this, but I'm just going to limit it to a stack. I think it's a stack, makes a stack of 10. I could be wrong. If it does, then I'll make, I want like 50 of them, I guess. I don't know. I don't know how many I want. How many do I want? Who knows? Okay, this guy I think has the same recipe, a similar recipe. So let's just go ahead and boom, boom, boom. Just follow that pattern that I have there. And I missed. Boom, boom, boom. Mm -hmm. And this one is going to go like this. I'm so proud of myself for finding this little pattern. I imagine other people have found it as well, but um, I don't know. This is one of the things that makes me happy. Um, and if you're using the pattern and you don't give me credit, I don't care. It, it's not about the credit. It's just about the joy of discovering things. That's that's where the real fun is, right? And uh, if you get credit for it, that's nice. If you don't, oh well. You know, I'll put that there. Okay, so we've already made eight of them. How much does he require? It's 10 steel. He requires 10 of each. This guy requires um, twice as many gears and twice as many pipes. Right? So I should probably just do this here. Move this here, that there. Put that there, move that. Make it a little more symmetrical. 
12. I think that makes a stack of 50, and this makes a stack of 10. Gates have finished. Let's do the next one. Okay. All right. I do need to build railroad tracks. I think railroad tracks require um, stone. I need to, do need to get stone on this bus. I don't think I have room for it. So I need stone and stone brick. Maybe I'll cook the brick here. No, I need... I guess stone is up there. And stone brick, huh? Stone and then stone brick. Okay, sure, whatever. Let's get stone on the bus. Let's get stone brick. I need both. I need them both. I need them both. Look at this. The iron is dormant. Okay, so I have down here, I have a little stone patch. Is there another stone patch that I wanted to tap into? That's a lot of iron up there. This is 5.6 million. That's 3 million. I'll be building on top of that patch, though. Okay, this is the only stone patch that I see. I need to build radar. Somebody reminded that when I was streaming this. Um, not this episode, but this series, but um, Factorio in general. Like, where's your radar? I'm like, oh, yeah. You need radar, don't you? There's two radars for you. And they'll start working on telling me what's out there. There's a nice patch of coal. I imagine that's just the tip of the patch. It could be the patch itself. I don't know. Maybe they give a bonus to the starting area. But this is my coal. I don't really get any more stone here than this. This is it. I better be very careful in how I apply this. Okay. So we're going to pull all this out. And then we're going to make stone bricks. And I imagine these boxes are just full of... No, they're not, actually. Hmm, interesting. That's how much 100, 200 coal will get you, I guess. All right, there we go. Okay, so... How do we get the stone? Without getting iron. Do we sort the iron out? Do we have a splitter that'll block? We can have priority on the splitters. That's right. Oh, that's so right. All right, we're doing that. <laughs> uh, there we go. And then we're going to do here. We're just going to mine this patch out first because we're doing priority, man. I can't believe I can carry all that stone. That's, uh, that's pretty incredible. Edge that's going to be covered by this guy. So, And I'll move him. No, I'm just going to do it. All right, there we go. We're going to combine all these together. Any more yellow belts? Can I make more yellow belts? I can make 11. Let's get rid of some of these ingredients that I don't need. All right, so first part of the comment. Expensive products so that you don't belt them. Um, yeah, so I made a comment on my last video. I'm like, what if the products are so expensive that Building belts is just really stupid. Um, I've been thinking about that too before I read his comment. Um, there we go. That should make plenty. Let's get them all wired up. That'll be my center. Hello. There. What we'll do is we'll take this belt. We'll just combine them up together. Uh, I don't want it to go there, actually. Okay. Maybe make this a... Uh, no, this is fine. I, I'm, I'm sure this is fine. And yeah, maybe we'll just do it down to one red belt. Okay. Now at this point, I want to split uh, output priority to the right. I only want iron ore. 
iron ore. There we go. Let's see if that works. Yeah, that should work. So if I pick up here, yeah. And then we will balance this. Well, let's bring it up and then balance it. We're going to have it combine. And then the input priority will be on the right. So if there's anything on the right, it'll take it. Okay. Yep, there we go. Uh, maybe this will be my my stone brick array. Maybe that's what I'll use it for. I don't know. Automobilism. Okay. All right, so he says, there are some people who already play the game trying to avoid having things sitting on belts too much, but honestly, a belt full of items is worth maybe a few seconds to a minute or two worth of production time. So the cost of having items sit on a belt is comparable to sm to a small added cost in building the factory itself. It doesn't actually reduce efficiency at all. That's exactly right. So that's the inventory cost in a business. As the cost of products goes up, it doesn't actually give you a reason not to put them on belts because belts are basically just a storage method in the current game. I'd say if you want to discourage massive amounts of belts, there has to be some cost associated with running them. The first thing that comes to mind is making them cost energy to run. If you think about it, it is a bit OP that belts can transport items for free. Another thing could be that items will decay due to weather corrosion if you leave them outside for too long, just like in RimWorld. That's interesting. Maybe belts wear out and need maintenance occasionally. Maybe they can only transport certain items. Maybe they can't turn tight corners. It sort of sounds like I'm disagreeing with you, but I'm really not. I think everything in the game is currently way too cheap and way too easy to make and only adds to the problem of people making, adding too much of everything. Yes, more expensive stuff equals good idea. Even the fast underground belts that you're complaining cost too many gears, you still make them the dozen by the dozen and don't think twice before putting them just about everywhere. It looks like they're pretty cheap if you ask me. Okay, so uh, that's an interesting concept. Um, and I, I think if I could summarize the concept that he has, it's uh, that... Um, the, the way the game works is you, it's too easy to expand stuff. If you made it more expensive, maybe people wouldn't just keep expanding. Maybe they would actually be more reasonable with what they do. Okay. I don't think I can disagree with that. Um, the only thing I can think of is like power, like nobody plays this game thinking about the power costs of anything. The only time you think about power costs is when you've run out of power, right? And even then your goal isn't, it's never to say, let's use less power. It's always, how do we um, use the power that we have, right? And, how, or how do we like, you know, make more power? That's what it is. Like, we're gonna keep using the power we have, but we're gonna make more power. Okay, let's get this on the outside here. This is gonna be some spaghetti. Let's go ahead and put those on there as we drain it. There we go. And this is going to go up here. And then we're going to have to move it on the outside. Let's have stone. If somehow we can have it go and come up here. I think we need coal in the main bus too. All right. So we'll just have the stone. I think we'll just have the stone go like this. Let's use red belts here. It's a bit of a mess. It does feel like I'm hacking a solution together. I am. Okay, this is going to go up here. And go up there. This one's going to come here. And then go up there. And then we're going to leave room for coal. We can actually stick coal in the middle because we're using red belts now. But I don't want to. And besides, it's already here. And again, red belts are probably overkill. I don't think it's overkill for the coal. I think coal is one of those things you need a lot of for the plastic. Okay. Yeah. So I don't making them more expensive, make uh, repairs. So the way I thought repairs would work in Factory, and I've thought about this a lot, is if you had a feature where things decay, then you would just have to build a bunch of repair bots, and your factory could only expand based on how many repair bots you have. That would be it. That's the entire thing, right? It doesn't sound that exciting. 
does it. Um, so what I need to do here is go like that and then have um, and then just link up like there. And I guess we can't do stone bricks here, so we have to do this one. Um, no, three. Okay. And the stone bricks would have to be up here. And then let's use yellows. Nope. Okay, there's stone bricks. So we have stone and stone bricks. So we can start building our trains and stuff. Well, trains would need engines. We don't have engines. But we can build wagons. Need more yellow belts. So yeah, adding a cost to running the factory, um, I don't think it has as big as effect as we'd like it to have. It, it's more like um, more like just to, just you know you have to build this many power plants now, you know, because uh, there's a new power requirement or something like that. Maybe if there was a third resource you had to manage, maybe that's what you're you're saying is if we had like a, a resource not just power but repair bots or. Um, the grease to run the belts or whatever something like that yeah that could work oh, i can't build um i can't build i have to build this way i don't know how many of these i want i think i want five of them maybe six i think it's six actually because the chemical plants are 125 percent efficient while these are just 100 so yeah okay let's go over here let's see what's going on Looks like the iron is backed up. Okay, let's do this. Let's say input priority is to the right. Right? So that way we'll be as long as iron isn't completely backed up. We'll be pulling the iron out. This guy's already drained. No, he has 578 iron to go. Let's drop off this the ore. There's some copper ore as well, just 22 of them. And I have some stone I want to get rid of. That's a lot of stone, isn't it? Okay. I have plenty of stone brick now. Okay. Uh, this guy, I'm going to require some more circuits. That's five. I need one more. Now I need gears. Six. There, there are six of them. All right. Um, yeah, I need a yellow factory to build those. But I can build tracks. Let's build tracks. And we're going to build a lot of tracks. Let's fill, or let's build steel chests, actually. Okay, so this just requires sticks. So we need to make sticks. Nope, make sticks over here. I think this is like the only use for sticks is tracks, you know, modules might as well, right? Okay, so we got sticks and this makes two sticks every time. This guy takes half, half a second. This guy takes uh, half a second. So we will put two inserters running does he take one iron plates he takes one iron plate okay let's get the iron plate down okay and that should be building all the sticks he'll ever need this guy requires steel and stone how much of each one of each let's do steel here and stone here or steel on the inside so steel here. And we'll have this guy go out here and then we're gonna have stone come down. This is backwards, isn't it? Need more underground. Underground bits. 
need lights. I'll make lights. That's only 50. That's fine. Yeah, so maybe having another resource like repair bots or, um, and you kind of, I, I do like in the late game, it's kind of fun that you have to, what's the right word? Um, uh, you, you kind of set up these zones, right? Where there's like the factory proper where all the robots can go. And then there's like the wilderness. You know what I'm saying? It's and then um you have to do things to expand the factory. All right, this guy's gonna be a full time job just using one each time. There we go. Let's make some tracks. Should I make more tracks? I think that's fine. I think it'll be a while before I catch up anyway. And wagons, I don't know. I'll build the wagons manually at first. They're expensive. And the engines, of course, need engine units, which is something I have to build with the oil before the oil, after the oil industry. All right, it's time to build the oil industry. And I have all these stone bricks. What am I going to do with all these stone bricks? 10 chemical plants, 20 pump jacks. That's fine. That's plenty. We're running low on something. We're running low on copper because I disconnected something. I'm a big fat meanie. There we go. Uh, second part, thousands of crafting components. Man factorial manufacturing is currently low variety, high volume. And I think high variety, low volume is what we're both advocating. In factorial, you're expecting to just spam out more and more of the same components faster and faster. You complain that underground belts cost too many gears. Well, it would be more interesting if they actually cost uh, some gears, some bearings, some rods, some tubes, some bolts. That's where you. That's where you end up with uh, in uh, in Bob's mods. And uh, before before I read further, there's actually a thought I had is you you basically have components that require components that require components, and if the components are specialized for a single output product, like I was, I had this idea of building a mod where you build battle mechs, you know, and the battle mech requires you know ten thousand things. It's like a rocket, right? And so it requires, you know, a certain number. It requires a right arm, a left arm, a right leg, a left leg, a torso, a head, and then the weapons that you put on that battle mech. Um, and then to build a right arm, you need this and this and this, and then you need that and that and that to build a left arm, you know, and stuff like that. And I think that'd be really interesting to have that all come together into a battle mech. Um, and each component, like, you know, actuators and stuff like that, like there's independent actuators and there's like left arm actuator, right arm actuator. Right arm upper actuator, left arm upper lower actuator, and you know, all those different, like 10,000 different components that are each built with little pieces that all go together in this in fact, magnificent puzzle where you need like 10,000 factories just to build one thing. I think that'd be pretty cool. But each of the factories is doing a different little job, you know, and I think that'd be pretty cool. Anyway, so uh, I'll keep reading now. Uh, the current... The current challenge in the game is how do I get gears here? It's not really a challenge because we've already got gears there. You just need more, so you make more, but that's not a challenge either because you're already making gears or you just need to transport more, but that's not a challenge because you're already transporting them. It's the only thing you really do is expand things and they already exist and very rarely set up anything new. That's true. Uh, you know, when I was thinking of the current goal I have is to build obviously something very big and to build something very big, I basically need more of the same, you know? More belts, more factories, just copy and paste, right? Um, <clears throat> but there is some interesting things that come into to the game with scale, like um, using transport belts to transport large quantities of stuff a long distance just doesn't make sense. And then when you transport with trains, well, now you have to build the inserters and the transporters to move it between trains and things like that. And then that train network becomes a whole other issue. So there's like a, when you're doing it scale in Factorio, you do use a different way to transport stuff, but you're transporting between localized factories that probably use belts or they use robots or something, you know? And um, if the challenge was, what's a faster way to make belts? And if it wasn't immediately obvious that you just need more gears and you needed to take a look at all your components and all your machines, etc., that's really what the game is all about. The bottleneck issue, exactly. 
You actually do it all the time, but on a small scale, you have a smelting setup and a circuit setup and a gear setup, which are all interesting projects in their own. But once you've done them, they're done. And you can use the same setups again and again in the new games. What's disappointing is that each of the setups is so small and so self-contained that it's really easy to just repeat them when you need more stuff. And there are so few items in the game that you don't really need to do much work on making all your setups. That being said, I think thousands of components is a bit much, but I definitely think that there isn't enough of variety of components in the games right now. Okay. So the idea I think you're trying to express there is that the fun part of the game is building these little components, like building um, this component, for instance, right? Or rather, this component here. No, no, let's include the belts, this component. Or you can even see, um, I want to hit Q, there we go. This is actually a component, right? The green and the red coming to a single belt. Anyway, so um, very interesting concept that, yes, that's the fun part of is coming up with these new components. Like this component acts as a single unit, even though there's 10 factories. And you can see there's this pattern, but it's not really repeated. It's like mirrored in like different ways. So this is like a four-way mirror of this yellow where this these copper circuits happen to overlap. This is a pretty interesting setup that was fun to make. Um, this is interesting in that uh, normally if you want to put something on a belt, you build more vertical space. But here I'm doing it horizontally, which is interesting. And the same thing down here. But these aren't really that different. They're the same. You know, this is just like this one's doing tubes. That one's doing gears, right? Um, this one over here, uh, we had an interesting discussion about if I had put the inserters on this side rather than that side. You know, okay, that's interesting. Um, and then over here we have the mall. And the interesting thing about the mall is that you only build one factory. How are we doing, guys? Oh, you guys are building these guys at a prodigious rate. And then you have this pattern you repeat over and over again of how you move things, how you get them into the position. So that there's like this component here. Really, this is a component. Or if you think about it, these two or these three things together are a component. That's interesting. Okay, let's go build some oil. While we're playing around with this, let's go find some oil. Do I even have oil on the map? I don't have oil on the map yet. And I need to make underground pipes. A lot of them. Um, if I don't get this, this is going to be bad. I need to make lights. Lights require sticks, right? They do require sticks. Let's make some lights. <laughs> and let's get that one there. I'm, I'm almost out, aren't I? So he's going to require circuits and plates. Um, and circuits are going to be up here. Hmm. Is that right? I'll only skip three. All right, let's get some inserters going now. And let's get an exerter. I wouldn't mind building a factory if I had like 3,000 of these things. And most of the factory was figuring out how to get things to where they needed to be. The transport problem is an interesting problem. The assembly problem is an interesting problem. The, um, what is it? The composition is also an interesting problem. How do you compose things together? You know, those are all interesting problems. What's the other thing I wanted to build? I wanted to build, um, of course, I need stops and lights and stuff like that. I'll do that later. Power poles probably be pretty important. Uh, underground pipes. That's right, underground pipes. These guys require iron plates, and they require pli pipes, and they're expensive to make. They're very painful to make. And we need pipes as well. Yeah, let's we'll have it come down here. How did I have that? I had to go down and then immediately we... Okay, so you're gonna need underground pipes. And it looks like we'll be needing a lot because oil does not appear to be very close by. This requires 10 pipes and five iron plates. So actually what I might do, like that. 
that was an interesting fun thing to do an optimization of how to load it looks like we're caught up on gears probably because we're not making red belts anymore now pipes are having fun let's make some more pipes i don't think i'm going to need this many pipes i don't have the spreadsheet in front of me but you know if it's for underground belts it's worth it one two okay one two three Let's get this guy. Are we only pulling from one side of the pipes? It doesn't matter to me, but I mean, it doesn't end up mattering, but it's always interesting to see how that ends up working out you know I've decided that I want more okay where's my oil I don't see any oil let's build some more radars let's put them at the outskirts now One there. Let's go over here at the power as well. So yeah, I guess Factorio, now that I'm thinking about it, Factorio is a game where you do different things, right? And one of the things you do is explore. Another thing you do is exploit. That's basically getting the resources out of the things you found. Another thing you do is you, you design factories right another thing you do is you build factories that have been designed you know and building is basically doing the design over and over again so probably should move that to the right not over here how are we doing we're still not even using half of our power and i haven't even finished building one array all right we'll put the radar over here Uh, bottlenecks. That's right. Finding bottlenecks is an important thing too. So, and I could just walk out with power and just, maybe I'll do that. Let's use the big power poles. If I can build them 5, 10, 15, 20, let's do that. Um, thousands of components is a bit much, maybe 500, maybe 200 or 300. I think a thousand is fine. I, I think anybody would be able to manage a thousand. You'd need a spreadsheet, of course, but um, you know, people might say you're ridiculous, but I think I think it's fine. All right, remove belts and character. There's nothing intrinsically wrong with belts. Um, I assume by belts you mean the tool belt. Wait, I don't need to do that. I just need to stretch it out as far as it'll go. And then I think a couple more and then I'll set down the radar. All right, last one. Did I bring a radar? No, I did not, but I can build one. It's a little bit too far, but whatever. It'll explore faster. I don't see anything right away. Yeah, so we'll have to wait until we find some oil. I'm a bit surprised that it's not in this area here. That's kind of surprising to me, actually, that we don't have oil there. Um, it could be a long walk. So I'll start walking back while I read this comment again. There's nothing intrinsically wrong with belts. I'd say the belt idea needs to be expanded, not removed. If they had... Uh, 
running costs as mentioned above that would be interesting right now there are zero reasons not to use belts in the game i definitely advocate having some alternative methods of transporting items to make people actually think about what method to use yes agreed 100 percent one of the reasons why factorio is so fun is because you have three different methods of well four different methods of moving things around um the first method is belts the second method well i guess you can count five inserters inserters moves things belts moves things you can carry things in your pocket um, you can use trains and you can use robots to move things around so yeah so there's like five different methods of moving things around if we had six or seven more ways i think that would be interesting you know and i can think of a couple that would be interesting um what one one technology that is talked about uh, time and again nobody ever does anything about it though is the idea of building um like catapults right uh basically you're shooting things uh, into space you're receiving it from space that's one way of doing it it might be cheaper to launch something into space and have it come down on the other side of the planet or the map uh, in large quantities than using a train that would be pretty cool i think if we had a factorio game where you were using rockets to transport things from one end of the map to the other you know um that would be cool uh so trains we can use planes planes would fly the difference between rockets and planes is rockets would go up anywhere they want and come down anywhere they want. They're basically moving so fast in space it doesn't matter anymore. Okay, so I want to build more of these radars. I mean, That means I need more gears and plates. There's 10 of them. I need more of these uh, big power poles, which means I need more steel plates. I'll grab some of this. Now I need more copper. Okay, so now I'm going to head north. I'm going to go north, and then when I get far enough, I'm going to drop a radar. Okay. <sighs> Maybe a smaller version of trains and railway lines. That's interesting. Um, oh, there's trees here. I need to focus on laying this down. I can't read and do this at the same time. On the way back, I'll read, though. This isn't straight. Is it going to find a place? This is too dense. I found a place. I can't believe it. Okay, that's probably too far. Radar time. Yeah, that's a little bit too far. I'll probably go down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'll go down eight and put another radar down. It's one. Speed modules. Two, three, four, five, six. I think it's about here. Is this where I want to do it? No, let's go down one more. Uh, there's plutonium or uranium actually. That's a not a small patch of uranium, but no oil. None. Okay, continuing on. Um, I can see what you mean about removing your character from the game. Now that I think about it, factory would be a lot less tedious if you couldn't just build your factory and not worry about you're actually standing to pick things up and put them down. I think this comes from the way you play the game, though. You play without biters because that part of the game doesn't interest you. Fair enough, honestly. And I think Factorio needs your character avatar. It adds that je ne sais quoi to the game. Without your character, it would still probably be just as fun a game, but it really wouldn't be Factorio anymore. You're right. Factorio is Factorio is kind of this bridging the gap between um, playing Minecraft and 
uh, you know, these production games that it's a whole new genre that hasn't really existed. I mean, they kind of did exist, I guess, in some ways, in some games, I guess. You can say StarCraft is kind of like a production game. Anyway, moving on. Last, finally, another one of my suggestions. How about getting rid of science? Yeah. Right now, science is the biggest consumer resources in the game. That doesn't make much sense to me. If there was no science and you spent all those resources on making machines, it would be better. Machines are dirt cheap right now. You can make hundreds of them at basically no cost. I think it would be more rewarding if machines were significantly more expensive as well as being harder to make because of all the extra parts they need. Instead of science, you'd be making a set of machines that can make the components you need for the next set of machines instead of using the same machines over and over. Oh boy, you said my last comment was a long one. If I spent all this time learning to code, I would just make my own games and call it a day. Yeah. Um, so machines to do what? And that's, I guess, what's the point of games is to have fun, right? So um, without science, what what does science give? That sense of progression. There's a sense that there's something that the Dungeons and Dragons stumbled upon was people like seeing things progress. They like seeing the level up. They like seeing new abilities and features unlock as they play the game, as they do something, right? And so you can't really... Uh, can you make a game that doesn't have progression? I guess chess is a game that doesn't have progression. But even then, uh, if you start playing chess seriously, there's ranks, you know, and you do actually get better the more you play and the more you learn techniques and things like that. So I don't know. Uh, could we have a game without progression, without science? Um, if the if there was some sort of progression, like uh, in Pac-Man, you know, you don't level up in Pac-Man, but people get better at Pac-Man. You know, there's this, you do get better at it. I guess in, the, in a game like this, it's not about, it's not really about making your character better, right? Nobody ever says like, oh yeah, I have a level 100 factorial character. I've researched all the science. Um, researching all the science really isn't that big of a deal. Once you figure out how to research some of science, then it's like, yeah, I've done red science and green science. And then finally I've done blue science and all the others, you know. But once you get past the initial hurdle of doing science at all, I think, I think the thing is, uh, if the progression, if there is progression in the game, it should be not artificial like science is. It should be actual progression, like you're actually getting better at the game, like uh, puzzles, like building, putting puzzles together. You actually get better at finding pieces and your strategy at putting the puzzles together. But there's no like level up. You've solved the 1,000 piece puzzle. Nobody ever does that. You know, nobody ever talks about how many piece puzzles they've solved. Why? Because puzzles are fun and you do get better at them. And it's an interesting, fun thing to do. You know, lots of little surprises and things like that. Um, if we built a production simulator that was a puzzle in and of itself, and we needed some artificial reason for you to build this thing, right? Um, in Factorio, the artificial reason is to fight the biters or to build a big base or to research all the science, right? But if we did it for a different reason, I, I think, I think maybe there could be a competition like whose factory is more efficient or something. Uh, maybe that could be a thing, or maybe you had some kind of competition with who builds the best stuff, right? So your factory isn't more efficient. It just, it's, it actually builds better stuff, you know? And so the efficiency isn't from the factory so much as from, you know, as long as we have more iron, as long as we're consuming iron and stone, this will work. But once we stop consuming one or the other, it won't work. And in this case, if we stop consuming the iron, then stone production will be shut down. So I might want to build a buffer. I think I'll do that out of steel chests. Um, just to keep the iron flowing. If it ever becomes a problem, I will build a buffer. All right, let's go back here. So lasers, pew, pew. There we go. What are we at in time? Oh, that's the entire episode. Just responding to comments. Oh, there's replies to this comment. Let me go look at the replies. First reply is for Badcock701. The character is there to encourage automation input into a consumer. Oh, yes. That initial beginning of the game when you're like, hey, this is Minecraft. And they're like, no, it's not. You know, you can sit there and do that if you want, but why would you do that? When you can automate 
Yeah, so it kind of person it kind of puts you in the game, doesn't it? Um, the belts are free, low cost to encourage automatic input into a consumer. And they talked about this. One of the reasons why the belts are free is because you wouldn't be able to automate power without it. Um, if there ever was a problem, you wouldn't be able to kickstart your giant power grid array unless the belts are free. And items are simplistic. A neat idea would make an R&D simulator. All motors take wire, a magnetic cage, a shaft, and a fastener. Some applications that use motors need more insulation on the wire, need more windings in the cables, need to have different torque histograms. Fasteners are several variable screws have length, width, head type, uh, mixture of metal, number of threads per unit of length. Nails have length, width, head type, mixture of metal. Pipe has different wall thicknesses, diameter. Pipe fittings have different wall thicknesses, diameter, bend angle reduction, number of connections. Filters have different screen sizes and a few other things. All of this to be build a pump, a grabber arm, a robotic welding machine, a screw threading machine, a lathe, a 12-ton press. Ooh, a 12-ton press. Um, I didn't realize how important those huge presses are, uh, like the 10,000-ton presses. A camera, a packaging machine, a sorter, a packager. One machine could have a tolerance of one meter, while the next R&D company over could have a tolerance of one inch, whereas another could have tolerances of one meter. That's another thing, too, is the tolerances of the components. Um, maybe like you need to have a sorter that will sort out. Like with CPU manufacturing, even today, I believe they just print the CPUs and then they test them to see what they got because they don't know. You know, and some CPUs are going to perform one way and others are going to perform another way. And you don't know what you got until you look at it. So, yeah. Yeah. Quality assurance is important. And then and then you'd be building a better factory because your components are more precise. And so you're able to build more precise components and build a more precise factory. Um, there's a whole history of like how machining started. It started with the guy trying to make flat plates. Once he's able to get like perfectly flat plates, he's able to build all sorts of things from that. And uh, the lathe was an important tool to get there and all this kind of stuff. Anyway, all of this to build a pump. Okay, Thomas Frewer, three hours ago. Encouraging automation is reason for several of the features in Factoria. The problem is here is that those features are meant to make the game more accessible for new players, but experienced players don't necessarily benefit from them. That's why science is in the game too, so that new players aren't scared off by all the dozens of things that they can make and get exposed to it gradually. What I'm trying to say is that some players don't need to be encouraged. We just build. Yes, we just build. Um, yeah, the science, this is this is something that, that actually um, bothers me. So if, if you were to take this thing, right? And you say, wire this up. Okay, cool, it's wired up. And then you were, as a new player who hasn't researched all the science yet, to click on this box and you're like, what the heck? What is going on here? What is all this stuff? And then what's this, you know, this is overwhelming. And what they probably should do is change this to only show the stuff you've currently researched, right? So one, this menu looks a lot like your menu. And then over here would be like, oh, this is something else, right? And then as you research stuff, it would expand it. That's actually something that, um, how do I remove that now? I you just de deconstruct it. That's actually something that would overwhelm. If, suppose that we did have a factorial with, ten, with a thousand components, right? And you were to turn that on as a beginner, you'd be completely overwhelmed. You wouldn't even know what to do, right? Uh, maybe you can gray out the things that you can't build, right? Because you haven't built the components necessary for it, right? So until you dig up some wood, you're not building any power poles, you know? Um, and then you kind of grayed out like, hey, if you did dig up some power, uh, some chop down some wood, you could build power poles and unlock this. Maybe something like that would work too. Uh, same thing with the factories. Like uh, if a factory of a certain tolerance we would only be able to build certain things and things like that I, I like that idea of the quality assurance of like you have to throw away you know 10 components to get the one that actually matches and you have a recycling system that you have to build into your factory every factory has built into it the concept of what do you do with the waste by the way i know, I know what to do with these now what do you do with the waste right where do you put it how does it handle and, and the machine shops that I've been in, they have a big bucket. This is for aluminum shavings. This is for steel shavings. Uh, this is for scrap metal of different kinds. And it's part of their model. They, they, they know that they're gonna get waste and they decide that rather than just throw it in a big pile, they're gonna actually recycle it, and make some money back from it. And so every factory should be focused on not just like the actual building process, but what do you do with everything that comes out of that too? Like all the tri tri trim trimmings and shavings and stuff like that. Like if you were to have a screw factory, it would take a steel rod um, you probably have to have into it a regular input of uh, sharpened tools specific for that one machine. 
you'd have to keep feeding it that. Um, probably, you know, for every 100 screws, you need to replace the tool or sharpen it at least to build a new tool or get a tool sharpening and put it in there. And then uh, you would have the waste of the shavings. Uh, you'd have to probably use some kind of coolant. And so you'd have to recycle the coolant somehow, you know, that would be interesting. And then the power, of course, the power to run the machine. And the machine itself would wear out, so you'd have to replace that. And so eventually you'd have to come by and replace the machine and have junk machines. You'd have to recycle and scavenge and stuff like that. That's interesting. That's an interesting concept. I, I might map this out. I might map this out. Something between Factorio and Bob's Mods. And the, one of the problems with Bob's Mods is it gets really complicated very fast, which is fine. Um, but it, to me, it's like discouraging. Like I start off Bob's Mods, I'm like, okay, I got the wooden circuits. You know, I got the basic electronics working. And they're like, okay, now you need to go do all these 10,000 things for the next level. And it's like, no, I don't want to. You know, that's what I ended up doing with Bob's Mods. So anyway... I think this is a great place to take a break. It is an hour and 32 seconds in. And so I'll take a break, guys. We'll catch you tomorrow. I'll try to do this once a day or thereabouts. I'll record and upload immediately. Take care and bye-bye.